Sorry, girls. I think I muted myself just now. Okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I muted myself. Okay, can you hear my voice now? Okay, I hope you had a good day in school. Okay, uh, today I'm going to go to uh, 5.2, which is phytohormone. So this is very much related to what we did last lesson. Last lesson, we learned about the different types of responses for uh, plants. So in this, chap uh, in this topic today, we are going to explain why we have this kind of response, like for example, tropism. So it is be actually because of hormones. So plants also have hormones, not just animals and humans. Okay, so we're going to learn about the different types of hormones and also the function and how to explain why we have uh, tropism, phototropism and geotropism. It can be explained by uh, for, uh, plant hormones. Okay, so uh, can you please type in your attendance by putting your name? Okay, so that I know who has attended my class. It's my own personal record. Lah. All right. So I'm going to share screen now. I'm going to share screen and uh, please let me know if you can see this. Okay, now you can hear me. Ah? Okay, Yun Chi, good. Okay, so this is the topic today. Now, before that, I just want to revise a little bit. All right, of yes, uh, two days ago, the lesson before that. Remember, I was talking about um, this plant. Okay, wait, uh, I want to show you this plant. Hang on. Now, remember this? This looks very similar. Yes, the other day when I was talking about thigmotropism, when these plants are able to, you know, they can actually what coil around a stick, right? If you have a piece of wood, and the tendril, once the tendril comes into contact with something that is hard, it's actually going to wrap around it. This response is known as uh, thigmotropism. Thigmo actually means touch, so or contact. So when it touches it, it will wrap around the, the stick for support, uh, for to grip it for support. So in the picture in the textbook, they show you something like... Uh, it is actually glo morning glory. So I made a mistake of actually thinking it is a blue pea, a blue pea flower. So I want to tell you actually they are two different. They are two different species here. They look very similar because of the color. They are purple. Okay. Now the one on the left here is blue, a blue pea flower. It's actually called butterfly pea. And it's a bit like, um, looks a shape like a, a cup shape. Okay, you can see the picture here, the, the man holding the, the flower is not so, not evenly distributed, uh, the, the petal size. So one side is smaller, one side is bigger. So this is what people use to color the rice to become blue color. In BM, we call this bunga telang. So it displays or it shows thigmotropism because it has vines. So it will wrap around the, the paga or the stick to grab support so that it can grow taller. Okay, and this is the, the pot. So this, it actually grows from the pea, uh, the, the seed. Okay, so you must have, you may have seen the, the pea. The one that we eat now, we call snow pea, uh, tim dao, uh, it's something similar, but it's not the same. It's not a blue blue pea. It is called a snow pea. The, you know, we call it the holan dao, uh, right? The, 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 like this one, all right? That we normally cook. Ah, uh, this one, right? Then we have beans inside one. Uh, you eat the whole pot. Uh. You take the young ones, you can eat the whole pot. Uh, so this is no pea. Uh. Okay, but this is a different type. Uh, almost similar, but the flower is white color. So it's no pea. Okay, this is the whole thing. Of course, the whole thing is green one. Uh. Okay, we call it tim dao or snap pea. So it's very similar because it's like the uh, same family. So this is a uh, bunga telang or we call blue pea flower. In Thai uh, cuisine, they use a lot of this. They color the rice. It, it, some people use it to drink also. Okay, it is actually um, natural. It, it shows, uh, it can be, uh, when you put lemon into it, the, the water that is supposed to be blue, it will turn to purple. Okay, because of the interaction between the lemon. So it's something like a natural pH indicator. Okay, so the, it, it shows thigmotropism. Now the other one, which I say, Qian Niu Hua. This is morning glory. So morning glory, why do we call it morning glory? It, because it opens in the morning. So it also displays photonasty. Okay. So it's also a uh, thigmotropism because it has the vines to grip onto the uh su for support. So this one, the flower, the petal is evenly distributed. Okay. So you see that it's, it's like a, a trumpet, looks like a lava, all right? 
Okay, so it is called the morning glory. Okay, so these are two different. So the other yes, the other day when I was, uh, I when I saw the morning glory, I just immediately thought of the blue pea flower. So it's actually different species. Okay, so now let's look at today's lesson. Okay, I hope you have written your attendance here. Just let me have a look. Ah, uh, okay. So today I think not many people are joining the class, but doesn't matter. I hope those who are not here will be able to see the recording later. Okay, because it's a very important. Uh, chapter a uh, very important topic you have to understand this and it's actually quite interesting okay now let's look at phytohormone what does the word phyto mean whenever you see the word phyto this is a prefix a phyto here means plant okay plant like phytoplankton phytoplankton the plankton the little little like the looks like algae in the water that the small small fish feed on they eat that one it's called phytoplankton they're actually something like a plant okay so plant hormone phytohormone means plant hormone so they do not have a nervous system humans have nervous system and also hormone so we have two types of coordination systems one is nervous system with the electrical impulse running through the nerves you learned it last year all right another one the, another one of a coordination system is actually hormones so we have two humans and animals have two but for plants unfortunately they don't have nerves they only have hormone as their coordination system okay so they they do not have nervous system all right the plants do not have nervous system they do not uh but they do have the uh hormones so they are the ones which coordinate their response. So all this response of the plant uh, turning towards the sunlight, okay, and growing towards the sunlight and growing away from sunlight for the roots, this is, has to do with the hormonal response. It's actually because of hormones that makes it happen. Okay, let's look at what it means. Huh? Phytohormones or plant hormones, they are chemical substances, just like hormones that you learned last year. And they what they do, they stimulate and they coordinate responses ah, okay so all the responses that the plant exhibit all this nasty la and tropism la is actually because of the hormone it's a, the issue is a it, there is a response because of hormone there okay and usually hormone as you learned last year one of the characteristics they are produced in low concentration so you just need a little bit of the hormone but the effect is there already so you don't need a lot of it this is one of the characteristics of hormone hormone are secreted in minute quantities but it is able to produce the result that is desired okay so usually the phytohormones are synthesized or produced in one part of the organ or of the plant and is actually carried to the other part of the plant through the phloem okay so the phloem also carries hormones besides food Okay, and also the organic substances. Now let's look at five different hormones. Okay, I want you to remember five different hormones. Out of the five, the most important is the first one, oxin. Because this one, the oxin one, is the one which explains your tropism, the phototropism and geotropism. That one we will see later. Lah. Okay, so at the moment, is there any uh, questions for that? So far, nothing. Ah. Okay, Yun Chi, I see Yun Chi. Uh, Peishan and Wili Chi. Okay. Now, look at the names. Oxin, gibberellin, cytokinin, abscisic acid, ethylene. Okay, five different types. Not many, but of course the effect is, some of them are quite similar, the effect. So later I'll go through one by one. Okay. So oxin, just remember, this is very important. This explains the phototropism and the geotropism. So you need to know what is the uh, function of oxin first. Okay, uh, it stimulates. Okay, it stimulates means makes it happen. The development of the apical dominance in shoots and roots. Now, what is this word apical dominance? Okay, apical dominance. Now, what is the meaning of apical first? Okay, I want to show you this picture to show you what is apical. Now, but okay in here but there are two types of buds now some of the buds are uh where are we showing you okay i'm sorry yeah uh, let me see which one ah uh, okay there are two positions of the you know buds are the little little flowers that are supposed to come out later on so for buds you have two positions one is called apical bud now apical bud is at the tip here at the tip at the tip of the shoot there, it's called apical. Apical means at the top, the tip, 
最尾最尾那个最那个顶啊 ，all right， the 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 top is called apical. Another type of bud is called the lateral bud. It is in between the branches. So here, in between the branches, between the branch and the stem, there's also bud here. Okay, there's also bud here. So this is apical bud. This is lateral bud. Lateral means 旁边 Now, uh, auxin is actually produced right in the at the top of the shoot here. So this is the place where auxin is there. So here is where auxin is. If there is auxin there, the auxin will flow downwards. Okay, you can see the arrow flows downwards, and it's going to stop this lateral bud from uh, blooming. So when you have the apical bud, usually the 旁边 the lateral bud they will not bloom or they will not uh, become uh, that means it's not going to grow into new shoots. So this one actually what we call exhibits uh, it shows a apical dominance. Dominance means 好像控制 it controls. So when you have the apical bud up there. This auxin is produced up there, all right. It produced at the meristem there. It flows downwards and it's going to stop the lateral bud from growing. So that means you don't see a lot of branches coming out. Okay, this is apical. Uh, this is the what? Uh, what I wanted to write auxin. Ah,、uh, auxin is here. Auxin is from here. Okay, auxin is being produced. Okay. Now, what happens? See what happens when they cut the top off. If we remove the apical bud. You see what happens when we remove the apical bud. You will see that the lateral bud will grow. 看到吗 You see here. See here, right? Ah, they will start to grow. The sides will grow more. So you're gonna have new leaves coming out. So it's gonna be very bushy. Your your leaves will come out because you have already removed the apical bud. When you remove the apical bud, actually you take away the op. Actually, controlling that we call it dominance. We call it apical dominance. All right. When you have the auxin there, it is going to control all these lateral buds from、uh, growing. So this is called it has this apical dominance. Auxin will induce apical dominance. 如果有 auxin 啊 ，auxin the all the buds down there will not grow. Okay. Now, what happens? Let's number three. Yeah. If we put Uh, this is called、uh, IAA. Is actually IAA is actually a synthetic 人造的 synthetic oxygen. Okay, when a synthetic oxygen put there, you cut already. You original one you cut already. You put the synthetic oxygen there. It will make this one do not grow. You see, because oxygen is going to suppress. Suppress means inhibit. It will stop the lateral buds growing. Now what happens? If you take away, take away this IAA or call it this ah,、uh, uh, oxy, you find that you see it will grow. So this is what we call apical dominance. Apical dominance is the control that the a apical bud has over the lateral bud because of the presence of oxy. Okay, so when you remove this oxy, the lateral buds will grow again. Okay, so you have already removed the a,、uh, we call it the apical. So when the, when you have the oxygen there, it is not going to the the those branches at the bottom there a lot of leaves. So I give you show you this example. Yeah, see what happens. Here, first one, apical dominance. When you have the apical the a the oxygen there, this is where it is. When you have this oxygen hormone, you can find the leaves are like this. Okay, like this lah. Like this means not so many, right? Now, what happens when you cut away this one? You put on, you take away. See, cut ready, ah.、Huh? Okay, the first one here, terminal bud releases, and auxin will inhibit the growth of lateral bud. See, the side here don't have many buds. But what happens if you take away, removing the apical? We cut the top off. We cut apical bud. Or the top, the 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 bud here because that one produces the oxygen, right? So you can see what happens. Now I see so many branches come out. Okay, lateral bud will develop. So your plant looks like more leaves, producing bushy. Okay, 会比较多叶子 So if you want your trees to look very voluminous, 
look like very, very a lot of leaves. What they normally do is the gardeners will always do what to time they, they all trim. They trim the top, we call it pruning. And that means you cut off the top, which is the actually the merry stem that the apical bud said. You decapitate means you cut it off. You cut it off, it's actually going to uh, stimulate the lateral buds to grow. So your plant is quite bushy. All right. It may not uh, it may not have it produces flowers on us, another thing, lah. but you find that a lot it will grow by the side. Okay, how we choose leaves and so on. Okay, so this is the example what we call uh apical dominance. All right, so one of uh function oxin to this apical dominance for shoot you can control. You can control if there is oxin there, then the the the, the lateral will not grow that much. Okay, now look at the third method. Stimulates growth and elongation. This is important. When you have auxin, actually, auxin makes the grow long. That means it makes the shoot grow taller. It's going to help it to grow. Okay, help the help the plant to grow. So actually, auxin is can be considered like a growth hormone. Okay, it helps the plant to grow taller and of course, uh, it become longer on the cells. All right. Okay, let me check. All right, this is all. Okay, next one. It also stimulates the development of adventitious roots. Ah, what are adventitious roots? Now you learned before, I think, in uh, maybe a vegetative reproduction in your primary, uh, not primary, in your lower secondary means form one. I think when you learn about reproduction, you can also plant certain plants by cutting the stem, isn't it? Stem cutting, for example, rose. Okay, you see your neighbor has a nice uh, plant, a rose plant. So you also want to grow. Of course, how are you going to grow it? There is no seed, right? You can't get a seed and all that. So normally, they just ask the neighbor to cut one stem off. And then you can use this stem, this rose, uh, but, and then you can actually plant it as a whole tree later on. Now, how does it, where is the wood coming from? Actually, at the base of your stalk, uh, this is the rose, uh, okay? You cut off here, isn't it? Later on, it's going to grow little, little roots. Uh, these are, are conventitious roots. Adventitious roots are roots that are uh, not coming from the actual root itself. It can come from the stem. It can come from other parts of the of the, the tree, as long as it's not from the actual roots. So now, how adventitious roots you see here? Adventitious root formation is actually a stalk. It is actually a, a branch. You can plant trees on the branch when you cut off and then you put the, you like okay you let them for about let's say maybe a few days or maybe a one or two days then eat little little baby what all this hair or hair it is all this these are called advantage and you can actually put it into the ground and plant it it's going to be a new plant not just a, a not just a not just a, a branch that will be into a new tree okay thing about it's very easy to grow so because of its amenities be able to produce roots even if it's a stem you don't have to be from itself okay you cut off the stem from air or any branch it has the ability to grow this root and these roots are called adventitious roots so these are roots that arise from tissue other than the roots Okay, it's not the root, but it's the root that comes from other stem. Then you will get these. These are the roots that are called anxious roots. This is necessary because uh, we, when you want to grow from the uh, stems, you need to use this kind of root. And then you can plant the whole thing into the ground. Now here, how do you, how do you stimulate the, the, the production of all these all these? Uh, Advantageous roots to grow normally you put into water. You wait until the these roots come out, uh, and then you're ready to plant. You can make it faster by putting what we call rooting powder. It's actually a hormone. Okay, you can buy from the nursery, okay, the place where they sell all this uh failure or all this fertilizer. Okay, rooting powder, it actually contains auxin. 
So you put rooting powder there. You want this one to grow the root faster. You buy the rooting powder, you put there, and then you leave it for a couple of days, the roots will come out. And when you see roots are very happy, you can plant it into the ground. There you Okay, this is how you get your you, you plant the rose. Okay, so that's called adventitious root. Alright, okay. So any questions so far? Mm, I think yeah, I just see people writing their yeah, attendance there. Please do write your name so that I know how my reach out to how many people. Okay. Now that is still oxygen. We are still looking at oxygen. Huh? Now the number point number five stimulates cell division. That means it's good. Huh? It helps the plant. So this oxygen is actually something like a growth. Always remember oxygen is helping the plant to grow. Okay, having to the cells become longer, helping to grow, producing the adventitious roots, and also stimulating cell division. Ambient during secondary growth, this, when the stem wants to become, you know, go growing upwards, this is called secondary growth. So it actually stimulates uh, cambium growth. Okay, now next one. A lot of new terms you're going to learn today. Yeah? Inhibits, just, uh, yeah, that means stop it. Stop what? Abscission. Uh, abscission is what's the meaning? Abscission means shedding. Shedding. Diao. Okay. Of fruits and young leaves. Now, you see, sometimes uh, some trees, they will drop the leaves, right? They drop the leaves maybe because the leaves are old. Uh, that's abscission. Uh. Or maybe because winter or during uh, what you call autumn. Yes, autumn. Uh, not in our country, but in those countries, we've got four climates. We you have a zone or temperate uh, weather, the, uh, climate. You have a season called autumn. Okay. Uh, chill, uh, chill, uh, we call it, it's called chill, is the autumn. Then the leaves will drop. Now, the leaves will drop is because of the presence of a hormone. So, this oxygen is going to stop it. That means oxygen doesn't want the, the plant to drop the leaves. Okay. So, that means when you talk about oxygen, it's actually promoting youth. You want to promote the plant grow some more you don't want all the negative things about dropping uh, the leaves dropping so it's going to inhibit shedding inhibit shedding that means the plant will be dropping all the leaves and so on okay and next one inhibits the growth of lateral buds now just now we talk about the side lah, okay when you have the oxygen up there and the apical bud then all the side there the buds there will not grow there will there will not be new leaves there will not be whatever lah, okay if you cut the top then you find there's no Evidence, all the sites, all these lateral buds you will grow, the leaves will start to grow, and then you can see this whole tree wow, become so many leaves when you start to cut the top. We call it okay. Mean by my so far, understand so far. So we didn't talk about one on it. So you always remember oxygen. Oxygen is very important. Out of the five hormones, the most important is oxygen. Okay, now we look at the second one. Gibberellin. Okay, gibberellin Gib has something. It also promotes growth. It promotes elongation of cells. So actually, they work together. Okay, with the presence of oxygen, the gibberellin also works to actually make the cell longer. So it's like helping to grow also lah. Okay, stimulates the development of the leaves. Alright, stimulates. So all these are positive for Makes the plant growing, growing, grow. And one more important is germination. Ah, this is easy to remember. You see the word G. Gibberellin is G. Germination is also G. So when the seed, the seed wants to germinate, so fat ya, fat ya means when the, the baby shoot will come out, it's called plumule. And then the baby root will come out, it's called a radical. Okay, that is called germination. So gibberellin is inside the seed, right? So it will help the, the germination to, to occur. Okay, then next one causes the growth of flowers. Uh, so it also promotes flowers to fall for the trees, okay, for the plant. And inhibits developments of roots. Okay, so it stops the development of roots. So important uh, this one. Yeah, next one, cytokinin. Okay, cytokinin. Also very simple. All right. Okay, I see some message there. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you're not, it's okay. It's fine. All right. As long as you watch it later, it's fine. Okay, Yi Hui. Yeah, I read your message. Thank you. So long as they watch it, it's actually uh, you will. Watch it at your own time. Please do, uh, because I think all these are very important. Whatever tuition you have, of course, you can go, right? And it may also be the same thing, but it's always better to hear it another time. It will, it will sort of like the retention, how to remember things. You hear it more, you, it, it's easier to remember, okay? 
that's why we go, you, you, you have another tuition, okay? Okay, so cytokinin, it also helps to elongate the roots. And this is growth. Grow. So I circle this tree. These tree are more of hormones. They help the plant to grow taller. They help the cells to be to multiply. They help the uh the 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 tree to 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 grow shoot taller up. Okay, that means it's going to stimulate growth. So another one is to also seed germination. Are uh, very similar to gibberellin. It also makes the seed germinate. Okay, it also inhibits the apical dominance. Okay. Then delays leaf senescence. Okay, senescence means aging. Lawa. Delays means slows down. So that means it helps to grow. Doesn't want the, the, the plant to become old so easily. La. When you have cytokinin, that means the plant doesn't age easier. Okay, it doesn't age fast. That means it will keep on growing. Okay. It's lateral buds. Okay, this one will, will show will, will allow the buds to grow. Okay, of this oxygen there, it will stop that. When the oxygen is removed, uh, then the lateral blood will start to grow. Okay, so senescence is aging. Okay, lao la, that means growing older, growing old. Now, the other two I don't circle is because there's the opposite effect. This has more negative effect. Negative effect means it's something like related to growing older or it's the plant want to drop the leaves. Okay, it's not stimulating growth. That's why I put in blue. Okay, so these two, I'm going to change the color. I'm not going to put red. So I'm blue to make you to remember that this is, has a different effect. This is a, a different two groups, uh, a separate group. Okay, abscisic acid. Now, what is abscisic acid? This is the acid that means the leaf drop. So when the cell has a high content of this abscisic acid, the cell will dry up, it will die. So when it dies, uh, it will all dry up and leaf will drop. Uh, okay, so it's going to inhibit the growth of plants. That means it's the opposite effect. It won't grow. When you have the abscisic acid being produced, now it's like dying already. It's like getting old. Okay, so it's going to inhibit. That means like human also, we come to, we don't grow anymore. It's like when we can't achieve adulthood and then we achieve old age. Uh, the growth is going to be negative already. It's going to stop growing. Okay, then it's going to stimulate abscission. Uh, abscission that means shedding. Shedding means dropping. Tiawa, all right. Shedding or dropping. So the leaves will drop, all right. And flowers will also drop. Usually, it's after fertilization, uh, when the pollination has happened, the fertilization. Then you have the fruit. Then the the flower will dry up. There's no use for the flower anymore. So that's because of the cells there, right? It's drying up and then the whole flower drops off. Then mature, all right? The fruit later on, uh, if you keep it on the tree, you don't pluck it, uh, it's not going to be there forever. It's going to drop just like durian. Durian will drop because it's already chukot masa already. So things that are fruit that's already, you don't pluck it at the right time. You leave it there. It's not going to stay there forever. Okay, it's going to drop because it's already, you know, already old already. The, the drop by itself because it's going to dry up. The, the, the stem the stem will start to dry up because of abscisic acid. Okay, so induces seed dormancy. Now, dormancy means the seed is not going to grow. Dormant is like resting. Okay, dormancy, uh, the same meaning thing, uh, resting stage. When you have abscisic acid, it will not. That means the, the seed will not germinate. It's the opposite effect. Germination is fat, yeah. That means it's growing. Or it's coming out of the seed. Dormancy means the seed doesn't grow. It is resting. Dormant, being dormant means it's resting. Okay, so this abscisic acid helps the seed uh, not to grow. That means it is resting. Okay. In the closing during drought season. So when it's very dry, drought season is uh, Muslim Kamar is not rain many many weak months it's called drought okay the stomata will close it's because we do not want so much water to evaporate from the leaves so this abscess acid causes the stomata not to open so much so you have a smaller stoma that is good because you want to preserve the water in the plant okay so it induces stomata closing and it inhibits the growth of buds uh, so it stops the growth this is a negative so always remember the hormones one will have more of the inhibiting uh, uh stimulating growth that's the first three lah. then the last two we're going to talk about the opposite which does not so uh, in, does not promote growth it is the opposite effect 
Okay, so it inhibits the growth of buds and also the seed germination. Uh, it will not make the seed. Okay, it's opposite of the oxygen just now. Okay, now uh, this is important. This is usually the it's the kind of gas as a chemical produced by the cells inside a fruit that is ripening. 如果那个果啊, okay, the gua is a fruit that is ripened. Ripened that means so okay. You had, last time is green color, like mango is green. Right. Then suddenly, after the next few days, you saw us slightly, slowly, slowly becoming a bit orangey, a bit yellow and orange. It's because ethylene is being produced inside the cells there. Ethylene will convert certain chemicals there from green into yellow. The fruit becomes yellow when it's ripened. The mango, okay, or maybe tomato. Tomato, when it's green, it's actually, when it's not ripe, it's green. But when it's run, it becomes red because the chemical changes happens inside the tomato, tomato cells. What happens here, ethylene is stimulates ripening. Uh, so then when you talk about ripening of fruits, you think about it. It also stimulates, that means it stimulates the plants, the fruit to drop. All right. That means it's, it's already like, let's say, for example, the fruit is, fruit is already uh, massa already. So... Is the stem the stem will dry up dry up because of acetic acid and also ethylene so it's gonna it's going to what it called become dry and it's going to be and the whole thing is going to drop okay so stimulates abscission of leaves it stimulates the dropping of leaves and also fruits so here you have five hormones okay so remember these five hormones are huh? okay oxine gibberellin and senin this is for promoting growth Okay, to make the cells longer and so on. And the other one, abscisic acid, is the opposite effect of promoting growth, inhibiting growth. And ethylene is more for ripening. Okay, it also has a similar effect of uh, dropping, uh, simulating the abscission. Okay, so I want to add a little bit of my own notes. Uh. So here. Mm. So we just want to anything extra here. Just now we talk about oxygen. So we talk it another, see it another time, then probably you will still remember better. Okay. So let me check anything here. Okay. Right. Nothing. Just the students' names. Right. Next one. First one, you look at the oxygen. Remember oxygen? Okay. So oxygen, I put red because it's stimulating growth. Huh? So here, oxygen, the first one. Now that is a uh, man-made oxygen. It's called IAA, indoleacetic acid. Indole acetic acid. Now this is a uh, synthetic oxygen. Synthetic means ren zhao de. This helps when we spray this IAA uh, chemical. Uh, you can see chemical on the plant. It will promote better growth. Uh, okay, it will help the plant to grow better. So most importantly, remember is oxygen stimulate growth and cell elongation. So the cell becomes longer when you have the oxygen there. Oxygen promotes elongation in the shoots also and also the woods are huh? two places are huh? but of course later on we see there's a slight difference generally speaking oxygen will promote cell growth whether it is the wood or it will help okay the second one we also heard about this edges fruits remember when we have a stem we cut off the stem right we put special powder we call rooting powder rooting contains oxygen it will help the plant to grow all these little, little baby hair, not hair, baby hair, uh, these roots, roots, we call it adventitious roots. It's going to help actually function as the root for this one. You can put the whole thing into the ground, put it in the soil, and you can eat actually for function. Okay, now number three. Number three, all right. Ah, yeah, number two, uh, is agriculture, look at the application. To promote the growth of adventitious roots, the cuttings will grow faster. Right? So you dip in rooting powder. Uh, this rooting powder actually has oxygen. Okay, usually man-made, they put IAA, la, indole acetic acid. La. Okay, next one, patino, uh, remember this word. Patino copy is a phenomenon whereby the we make the fruit, we make the the flower, all right, form into the fruit without uh, fertilization. What does it mean? That means that uh, you don't, the flower, right, the flower is ready for, for fertilization, right? The pollen grain is supposed to come on the stigma, then the stigma, will, uh, the gamete will go down, and then it's going to join with your ovule, then your fertilization. To get a fruit now that is the common way of producing a fruit 
Good. But there's another way of doing it. This is like man-made. Huh? You spray oxygen huh, onto that flower. It is going to make it become a fruit without fertilization. Ah, without fertilization, that means ah, there's no seed. It's going to form the fruit without any. Which is a good thing for us, isn't it? When we eat, we don't want to eat the seed, right? So this fruit that is uh, produced without going fertilization process is as uh, this this phenomenon is called party no copy. Yeah. So there's no seed because the ovule have no chance to develop into a seed. Just spray this hormone, it becomes a fruit. Okay? So the stigma and the ovaries of something are sprayed with oxygen. So you put oxygen there, it will form fruits. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, being for the like, well, sometimes you have watermelon, seedless watermelons, right? You also seedless grapes, remember? There are certain fruits that we don't have seeds. Right, so and that is a good thing because for us to consume are uh, easier to eat without seeds, right? Okay, it's easier to eat without seeds. So this, how do they do it? It's actually no carpi using plant hormone called oxy. Okay, next one, herbicide. Ah, uh, take oxy uh, can also kill or not. It can also kill the plant, but you must use it in high concentration. So if the oxy is the the synthetic oxy, right? We make uh, man made lah. Uh, we very high concentration and then we spray onto the plant thinking that it's going to help it grow. Actually, it will have the opposite effect. It's going to make the plant die if it is in high concentration. So that means you cannot put oxygen too much also. There is going to be a certain limit where you want the positive effect of it growing. You need to put a certain amount. So if it's high concentration, an earth will help the plant, will, will make the plant die. Okay, so that's why, that's why humans use it as a herbicide. Okay, one of the examples is this synthetic oxygen called 2,4-D, which actually means 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. Okay, 2,4-D lah for short lah. Dichlorophenoxyacetic acid, this is developed by a scientist by the name of Dr. Galveston, okay? Back in about 1930s or 40s at that, 19 something. So he found that when he used this chemical, right, onto the plant, on certain quantity, good, it will promote growth. Wow, the plants grow very well. But then when he experimented and used very high concentration, it actually kills the plant. Okay? So this is used to kill weeds using this um, 2,4-D. It actually can be used as a herbicide. Herbicide. Okay, now any questions? Well, we have to go to the other three more. Okay, which is what? Oxygen haven't finished. Huh? Oxygen haven't finished. Just look at some oxygen. Any more? Any questions? Nothing. Huh? Okay, let's continue with oxygen. Now, number five. Now, why does the plant die? Just not talking about oxygen. Huh? High concentration. It will actually, uh, why does it kill it? because it will speed up the respiration rate of the plant, okay? It will speed up respiration rate, and then there will be insufficient glucose for respiration, and the plant will die. So you're actually causing it to die if you have high concentration of uh, oxygen. Okay, next one. Oxygen has the effect of preventing the developing fruits and leaves from falling off. Right? That means uh, preventing uh, abscission, right? Okay, it will inhibit abscission. That means it doesn't want you the, the plant will not die so early as long as you have oxygen. Okay, so it spray on the fruits a few days before harvest to ensure the fruits do not drop off before they ripe. So make sure that they don't drop off lah. That means they don't die too early lah. Okay, now next one is the apical dominance lah. Inhibit the growth of lateral buds. So if you have the oxygen there up there at the bud, the apical bud, then the buds at the side here will not grow much. Okay, so the plant will grow tall and straight. But of course, not so bushy. La. At the side here, not so many uh, leaves and so on. So it's used on potatoes to suppress the growth of lateral buds on the potatoes during shipment. So we do not want the potatoes to grow, isn't it? When you want to eat potato, you want to eat the starch, isn't it? We do not want to eat the stem that comes out, isn't it? So normally people say yeah, when the potato starts to germinate, uh, it's better don't eat uh, because it seems some people say it's poisonous. Uh, when it start to bud, uh, when it start to germinate, uh, it seems that there's going to be some chemical difference, uh, uh, changes in the 
composition of the potato. So there could be some chemicals there which is harmful to human. So they say that's why it's, I heard lah, but I haven't experimented lah. Sometimes when I see the potato slightly a bit of a budding, uh, I also eat. Okay, because so sayang to throw away, isn't it? So if it's maybe when it grown to a baby, baby plant, I don't eat lah, right? But if it's a little bit of bud, maybe it's still alright. So actually, you want don't want it to grow, alright? You spray a bit of oxygen on it. It will suppress the growth of the buds. Okay, next one, ethylene. Ah, this remember this is the one that is to promote fruit ripening. It is a gas. Okay, it's going to promote uh, the ripening of fruits. So fruits ripen is because of the presence of ethylene. The cells in the fruit itself will know how to produce this when it's time. Okay, when it's time, of course they know they know like it's all uh, DNA control lah. When it's about time to ripen, the cells will produce ethylene, and this gas will spread. All right. And then it will produce the neighboring cells. Uh, once it gets this, it will get more and more. Uh, the, the effect will spread. So maybe the first part, you will see a little bit of uh, orangey or yellow. Then slowly wait for another day or uh, more parts become orangey, isn't it? Then, then later wait another day while uh, the whole fruit already become uh, orange. That means already whole fruit ripen. So what does it do actually? All right. Uh, the cellulase, huh? All right, it's going to produce cellulase. It will break down the cellulose. So it makes the fruit become softer. Why are ripened fruits softer compared to the fruit that is not ripened? Remember, like for example, you have papaya. Papaya that is green is very hard, isn't it? Very difficult to eat. Normally, people cut it and then they put uh, marinade. Uh, they, they put as the, they call it mokwa shina, right? They, they, they put as the pickle, pickle, right? They go and like that. But once it already ripened, it becomes orangey and it's soft. You can see it's very, you can bite into it and eat it. It's because when it fruit ripens, cellulase is going to be produced. Cellulase. Cellulase is going to break down cellulose. Cellulose is the cell, the cell wall. Again, the cell wall is made of cellulose. So once it breaks it down, that means the fruit is going to soften. There's no more cellulose there to make it hard. So it, another thing is it's going to break down the complex carbohydrate which is not sweet right the complex carbohydrate like uh, poly polysaccharide is not sweet it's going to break down into simple sugar sucrose glucose and all these are simple sugar and this is actually sweet so that's why ripened fruits will taste sweet isn't it before it's ripened it's not sweet Eh, not sweet, doesn't, it doesn't taste sweet. So once it ripen, actually there's going to be some chemical changes it's brought about by ethylene. So ethylene is going to make, uh, the, this gas is going to make the sugar break down from carbohydrate, which is not sweet, into sugar, simple sugar, like sucrose, glucose, galactose, and all that. Lah. But of course, galactose is not from plant. Lah, okay, galactose is from the milk. So making it fruit, the fruit tastes sweet. Uh, that's important. Uh, that's what sometimes question asks you, why uh, why do fruits that are ripened taste sweet? Uh, now you know. It's because of cellulase being produced. It breaks down the cellulose and it causes the cells to become soft. And another thing is it converts the carbohydrates into simple sugar, which tastes sweet. Okay? And... Uh, if you want, you will want you have some fruits that are not ripened, and then you want to make it ripen faster. Normally, what we do is we put a fruit that's already ripened together in a plastic bag. So, like this, let's say I have apple. I want to eat the apple fast, but it's still green, not nice to eat, right? So, what I want to make it faster is I put in a plastic bag. I drop in a already ripened one. I drop in a green uh, 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 a root. A fruit that is already ripened, ripened fruit. Okay, a fruit that's already ripened, a ripe fruit. Why? It's going to help it to ripen. Why? Because it's going to produce ethylene gas. The ripened fruit will produce this gas, and this ethylene yeah, is going to stimulate the unripe fruit to ripen. Uh, so you can induce it, induce it, stimulate, stimulate the ripening by treating them with ethylene. How to treat ethylene? You don't have ethylene. You take a fruit that is already ripened. You put them together. And then some people are now number last time you say, uh, you wrap it with paper, newspaper. You wrap a fruit that is not ripe. You wrap newspaper. You put it into the maikong. You know maikong, the place where you put the rice. Okay, old people always say that. You want it to ripen faster, wrap newspaper, put in the where you store your rice. 
it's actually what's going to happen it's actually when you wrap wrap it with newspaper you are making the ethylene concentrated it doesn't disappear into the air it doesn't diffuse into the air so when you wrap it uh, it's like more concentrated it will uh, speed up the process of ripening okay so that is the way how you want to increase or speed up the process of ripening okay so another uh, effect of uh, ethylene is to stimulate the dropping uh, uh, shedding of a uh, uh, dropping of the abscisic, uh, uh, of the abs of the leaves and the fruits it's called abscission so if you want it to drop there you can spray this ethylene on the fruits then it will make it, the, the, the the fruit will drop faster okay maybe you want to harvest it that okay but of course you drop it it's not good like, because drop on the floor the fruit will land it will it will become damaged usually it's always better that farmers they always pick the fruit they know the correct time they pick it they don't wait for it to fall we wait for it to fall you don't know when it falls when it falls it's going to be damaged okay next one huh? cytokinins is going to uh, this is the something on is the growth hormone uh, this is going to help elongation stimulate cell division and cell elongation right so together with auxin it's the same effect it work together with auxin it will stimulate the production of shoot and the roots in tissue culture okay it will delay the aging so it's going to stop aging uh, because if it's a growth hormone it's going to have the positive effect make it grow 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 and grow so it's not going to make it die isn't it and it's going to delay the death or synthesis of the leaves uh. so you spray on the vegetables right to ensure that the green the leaves are green and fresh during packaging uh. so this is one of the applications okay gibberellin remember for germination stimulates cell division and elongation also promote germination of seeds increase the size of plants make the plant grow taller bigger and you rub on the seed to speed up germination you want the seed to grow faster i mean to germinate faster so you put in the gibberellin hormone okay abscisic acid this is the negative one lah, together with the ethylene this one will inhibit the growth now this one is not for growing it will actually slow down growing and promote dormancy dormancy means not growing the seed is going to rest rest in the state of not growing okay not going to germinate and then it is to prevent shoot growth usually in winter right winter you will have abscisic acid produce more for these plants so it's going to uh, sort of like put the whole plant into um, not growing state lah, okay winter so it's the seeds are not going to germinate as well okay stimulates the closing of stoma when you have water shortage or we call it water stress the stoma will be more smaller size so it's to help down to slow down transpiration okay so i've mentioned the effect of the five types of hormone so i'm also made it easy for you to remember the first three are for growing all right and then the other two one is ethylene is more for ripening remember ripening the other one is for dropping right it's like old everything old like you will drop so it's drying up it's abscisic acid okay all right so now let's go on to the effect uh, first of all let's look at eoxine first huh? mm, okay let me go to yeah this experiment effect on of oxygen on growth response now this one okay <coughs> now this is a, a famous experiment done many years ago okay when they experiment on the effect of oxygen <coughs> excuse me how does oxygen affect growth okay and later on they found out oxygen also makes the shoot curve okay towards the sunlight or the roots grow to away from the sunlight so I'm going to start a little bit. I know I cannot finish, right? Because uh, short time already. So this, the growth response uh, is mostly controlled by oxygen. That is why I want you to remember oxygen. If you cannot remember the rest of the hormones, also not very important. You need to remember oxygen. You need to remember ethylene. Ethylene for ripening. At least these two. Okay. Now this experiment is done by independently by three uh, scientists. Uh, Darwin. Okay. First of all, Darwin and Darwin because Darwin and his son. Charles Darwin and Fran uh, Francis Darwin in 1881, a long time ago. Okay, so they started experimenting on experimenting on oxygen. Then another one, Boyson Jensen, 1913, and another one went in 1928. So they've all found out that oxygen is very important in promoting or stimulating the shoot growing taller and also why it curves a certain direction. Okay, first of all, let me talk about what is coleoptil. If you see 
in your picture in your textbook, you have this part called coleoptil. Coleoptil, or sometimes they say coleoptile. Now, coleoptile is usually found in the monocots. Okay, usually for this experiment, we use the corn. Okay, corn is the bao sok, ah, all right? The corn, when, when, the, when it germinates from the seed, ah, this is the corn, is it? Right? This is the, 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 the seed from the, the you know, from the, the corn, right? Once it germinates, it's going to come out, right? It's going to come out this one, ah, this one. So at the tip here, there is going to be a protective covering. That is called coleoptile. So coleoptile is the pointed protective sheath. Sheath is like a cover, a cover covering the emerging shoot of in monocotyledon such as grasses, grass or corn. Corn is also monocotyledon, okay? Or in which a few leaf primordia and shoot apex of monocot embryo remain enclosed. Okay, doesn't matter. So what it means is this coleoptile is where it the tip there, the tip of that little baby shoot that comes up. That's the coleoptile. Okay, now number one. First thing, I want to understand this concept. Huh? We will continue in the next lesson. Okay, first of all, you need to remember for this lesson, in order to explain why it curves and so on, there are few concepts I want you to understand. Okay, first, maybe you can take a picture first. Here, number one, auxin. Where is auxin produced? Auxin is produced or synthesized at the coleoptile tips. So you need to have the coleoptile or the coleoptile or till if the auxin is to be produced. If you cut away the coleoptile, there will be no oxy, or oxygen produced. Okay, that's concept number one that you need to remember. So the coleoptile is important because that's where the oxygen originates. Number two, you know the oxygen is produced at the tip. Okay, let's say this is the coleoptile, the tip here. When it's produced, it's going to diffuse downwards. And remember the next stage, uh, the zone, uh, first of all, you have this meristem, is it zone of cell, uh, zone of cell, uh, cell division. Remember the first part there? After the second part is zone of cell becoming longer, zone of cell elongation, cell elongation. And the next one is the zone of cell uh, differentiation. Remember the three zones? Okay. So this auxin that is produced in the coleoptile will diffuse downwards and it's going to go to the uh, elongation zone. It's going to diffuse downwards to the zone of cell elongation and it's going to act there. That means this cell, once you receive the effect of auxin, it is going to grow longer. Okay, so the, the, the effect is felt at the zone of cell elongation. Okay, so here, auxin acts on the cells in the zone of cell elongation and promotes cell elongation, so it makes the cell longer. So that's why the, the, the shoot will grow taller. When you have the coleoptile producing the auxin, auxin goes down to the cell or uh, zone of cell elongation, it is going to become longer. Ah, okay, that's number three. Okay, so number four, the auxin distribution, that means uh, whether more or less, uh, is actually going to be affected by light. So when the light comes in different direction, it means your auxin is no longer even. Uh, means uh, it's not evenly distributed. When you have light coming from one direction, only one side, let's say. When the light coming from one side, the auxin will move to the side that is darker, that is away from the sunlight. Okay? Number six here. When exposed to light, auxin concentration will be higher on the shaded side. Ah, so let's say this is your coleoptile. If the sun, I mean, if the sunlight or whatever the daylight goes off, come from one way, one direction, ah, it's called unilateral light. This auxin will be supposed to go down to the set zone of side location, right? So it will actually, more of it will go to which side? It's going to go to the shaded side. That means it's more auxin will come to this side. On the side away from the sunlight. Okay, remember that concept first. Then later on, the next lesson, when I explain the experiment, you can relate, you will understand. So these are the concepts to understand. Okay, now go to number five or one more. Different concentration of auxin will have different effect on shoot and root. Now we learned earlier that it's going to make it grow, isn't it? We know that auxin is a growth hormone. It is supposed to make it grow. But 
the effect is slightly different when it comes to the root or the shoot. When it is in high concentration, that means not, not to say very high, that one, uh, the very high one is can kill one, that one can, can become a pesticide one, uh, that one, uh, normal, sorry, become a herbicide, that one is too high. So I'm talking about a little bit higher, right, high concentration, it will stimulate the shoot to grow uh, longer. It will stimulate the shoot. But this same concentration has a negative or opposite effect to the root. It is going to inhibit root elongation. How you different the effect? When you have this considered is high concentration, if I apply this to the shoot, it's going to make the shoot grow longer. Okay, but if I apply this to the root to the root of the plant, it is not going to make it longer. It is going to make it, I mean, slow down, slow down growth. So it has different effect for the root and the shoot. Okay, now one more, last one. But on the other hand, if you have low concentration, I make oxin. I mean, I have the IAA la, in all the the man-made oxin. I make it in low concentration, very little, right? Very little only. If I apply on the root, it actually will stimulate. Ah, so you have, don't put too much. I mean, the, the root does not need high concentration. If you want the root to grow, it has to have low concentration. Then only it will stimulate. So, so you can see the difference here. High concentration will stimulate the shoot. But low concentration will stimulate the root. Okay? Understand this? Now, so you remember these six concepts first. Okay, now, so for today's lesson, I, have, I haven't actually explained this one first. This one, I need to do another lesson. This is very interesting. What makes it, why it turns, it's going to, you know, curve and so on. So this, I need a separate lesson. Before we look at that, I need you to remember all these six concepts first. This will help you to understand when I explain all this. So for today's lesson, it's more for these five types of the Hormone, I took a quite a long time to explain all this. You need to remember the effect. Okay? Uh, oxine and all this. Lah. And gibberellin, oxine, gibberellin, cytokinin, ethylene, and abscisic acid. Okay, so for today's less, uh, homework, all right, please go and do this. Ah, now already. Okay, so go and do your workbook. Okay, fill in the function of these hormones. So I want you to look at page 78, your workbook, 78, and also 79. Okay, so for the next lesson, maybe you can just read through page 80, uh, that mean your the effect of the oxide, because I wanted to explain that, but I think it's uh, taking too long time. Okay, so I will leave it for the next lesson. So leave it for the next lesson. The next lesson, I will let you know when, okay? I will try not to have you on a Saturday. Right, of course, uh, yeah, it should be next week. Lah. Okay, it should be next week. So I'll have the lesson next week. Uh, so remember, this is what I need you to learn. The five types of the phytohormones and the effect. Okay, so next lesson, I'm going to talk about the explaining the effect of oxygen on growth and also on the tropism. Okay, any questions so far? Is there anyone to have any questions that you would like to bring up at the moment? Any questions? They know, huh? Okay, you can always telegram me. All right, okay. So I will see you in the next uh, lesson. Uh, please remember to do your homework. Huh? I will be back in school quite soon. Okay, and I will check your homework. Please remember to do your workbook. Your workbook is very helpful in uh, making sure that you understand the lesson that is taught. Okay, and please check your Google Classroom. I have sent the notes for the second chapter please fill it in all right okay so i will see you right thank you girls and bye bye have a good evening okay bye